Hi, I'm Sidney Justice Bronson. I was born in Chicago, Illinois, 1988, to a lovely family. Uh, growing up, I was a little bit different, I guess you can say. My dad, he said he had a a dream or a vision that he had to quit his job when I was born. An angel came to him and said he was supposed to watch over me and make sure that I went on the right path. And he used to always tell me that when I turned 28 that my life was going to change. And I didn't know what he meant by that, but... <laughs> A week before my 28th birthday, I had my first ayahuasca ceremony, and I guess he knew something that I didn't know. The first ceremony did change my life. Uh, the medicine told me to go to Colombia to work with the medicine, and to learn with the medicine, and three months later I did so. And I, I guess everything just started falling into place, and... I walked down this path, and now here I am, assisting a shaman, an abuelo from Amazonas, uh, learning with him and his family, and traveling, sharing the medicine with people around the world, and helping in their healing processes. It's, it's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. It's a path of discovery, it's a path of acceptance, and just finding your truth, letting go of all the illusions. And when you're able to find your truth, you feel like, well, at least I was able to come at peace with life and just accept everything as it is and find the joy in every moment. Well, this path can be hard. You know, for some people, they aren't willing to let go of their pain because they're so comfortable in it, but by myself doing so, I can be an example for others to show them that the other side might be a little brighter. Hmm. Hmm. The most difficult? Hmm. Let's see. I guess overcoming some of my vices. Yeah. I was very sexually active as a young younger guy and I I was attached to it, I guess, and found comfort in it. And over the years, I've found comfort in myself and realized I don't really need all that external pleasure. It's just a distraction from myself. That's been my hardest difficulty down this path. I don't really have any difficulties with ceremony or helping the people. Just witnessing people making changes in their lives. It always makes me smile. Just knowing that the work they were doing has an effect on the world, on humanity. Well, 
I guess people who are seeking this path of plant medicine should trust in this call. They're being called to the medicines for a reason and just not having fear of finding out what that reason is. If you feel like if you feel like you got some work to do on yourself and you feel like these medicines will help you, I would say go for it. Don't stop yourself. There's lots of beautiful communities, beautiful groups working out there right now, but there's also people who are just in it for the money, so when you do go out there looking for a place to have your experiences, try to get some recommendations and try to be aware of the people who you're getting involved with, making sure they, they have good intentions. Nothing really surprised me in this path, you know. I, I know anything is possible, so I'm open to whatever is to come. I feel, I feel that uh, some people this work might take a toll on, but if you're in a balanced state and knowing that what you're doing serves a purpose and doing what you're doing consciously with intentions and with attention, you should be fine. And just finished 10 nights of ceremonies and four different groups and feel just as good as I did when we got here. The importance of a team is making sure that everything is running smoothly making sure operations operate perfectly, make sure the people are taken care of, and have everything they need. The importance of a team is to create something beautiful, easily, seemingly easily, but with hard work. It just flows, everyone knows what they have to do, and everyone does it. Well, it depends on the community you go to, what the roles are. We work with the Colombian traditions, and the Colombian traditions, they have various roles, such as a fire keeper. This person guards the fire, takes care of the fire all night, makes sure it's at the proper height levels. There's a person who makes sure the bathrooms are clean, make sure the maloka's clean. There's a person who assists the participants, a couple people who may do so. There are people who just stand and guard corners. There's people who assist the abuelo at the table. And this person makes sure the table is set up for the abuelo or the elder and guards the table when he's not there and just make sure no one bothers the table inappropriately. Uh, lots of various roles. Every role serves its purpose and every part comes together to create the whole. Depends on where you are, who you're working with. I I would say we're kind of on a fast track here. I'm pretty sure no one would be where I am in, in three years working with an abuelo if this was a normal Colombian tribe. But we all are always are where we're supposed to be. I don't see that as my identity.
For me, it's the same as being any other human being. Try not to be attached to the labels that were put on you. We're all born a human being. Just because a piece of paper calls us a black person doesn't mean anything. We're only taught these things. If we weren't taught these things, it wouldn't even matter. Yeah, I think it's time to start teaching children a different thing. Teaching them how to connect with their spirits and the work that we're doing now will be the world would be a beautiful place if children were learning how to be content with themselves. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've written other poems before I started this path, but sometime in the medicine I was getting messages that I need to write. So I started writing. Since the page is already bookmarked, I'll read this one. I think it's a, an important lesson in the beginning of a journey down this road. It's titled Letting Go. There are things in our lives that don't serve us, yet we find comfort in keeping them around. They have been with us for so long, you could say it's the only way we know. It's what we're used to. But as we go through this process of becoming a new us, we must pack up some of this baggage. We have to see these things for what they are and allow ourselves to let them go. By letting go, we make room for the divine, a more aware version of ourselves. We progress closer to the us we came here to be. We evolve into the true you and the true me. That one came to me a couple years ago and felt like it was an important first step in going down this path is allowing yourself to let go of all those attachments that people are holding on to because those are the things that are really holding us back. Things that don't serve us anymore but yet we just want to keep them around and get rid of them for a week. and and. We just unconsciously crawl back to it. <laughs> so don't be afraid to let it go, people. <laughs> you don't need it. Just focusing on music, writing songs, and getting better at guitar. You know, Bettering my Spanish. More traveling, more healing. I think it'd be cool to have a, a ceremony on a cruise ship. <laughs> that would excite me. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't really get excited. <laughs> but that'd be cool. Okay. <laughs> Where? Oh, uh, maybe the Caribbean. That'd be okay. nice. Yeah. We do like I island hopping ceremonies on different islands every night. <laughs> and who'd you want there? All the people I love. The same people who come to ceremonies and anyone who feels called to do so. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah, it was random, but... <laughs> oh, it's great. It's perfect. All right, well, thank you, Sydney.